Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm the black man, black man outside. I'm the black man, black man outside. I'm the black man, black man outside. I'm the black man, no black man, black man. I'm a black man. Black man. black. Hey, welcome to another episode of Black Man Do Talk, where we have overdue conversations from a black man perspective. It's your boy, Street Hems. I am one of the hosts. We also got... What's good? It's your boy, Trey. And today we have two special co-hosts. Introduce yourselves. What's up, y'all? My name's Ty from the SBI. And I'm Caleb. Absolutely. So we have Ty and Caleb. Talk to us about why today is special. What do y'all men do? Uh, I'm a Dallas police officer. Um, so I patrol the streets of Dallas Trying to keep everybody safe Do the best I can As a black man out here trying to live Indeed You do a good job I, I want to put that out there You do a good job You seen him before? He's actually No lie He's actually texted me As I've been driving He told me one time Hey get off your phone While you're driving <laughs> <laughs> That's good, That's good. <laughs> I was like Where's no. he at? <laughs> I'm a police <laughs> officer With Grand Prairie Police Department uh, Three years so, indeed, fine. Yeah, y'all are killing it. Hey, bro, since, since since I see you last, bro, you been in the gym, man. I'm, I'm not even gonna yeah, stop. Man. Like you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. When, when somebody look at you out of eye, you kind of have to. <laughs> you got You got to get with them. You got to get with them. You got to get with them. You got to get them. You got to get with them. You got to make them make a business decision. Exactly. Hey, hey facts. <laughs> facts. I was making the business decisions at first. So I was like. <laughs> No, sir, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? You're right. You weren't speedy. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so talk to us. Uh, what were the... Uh, how do I... What were the stereotypes you went into believing? And also, uh, what were things that were confirmed and also flipped when you actually started serving with the police department? Started out hot, didn't you? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 we just oh. we just get hey press the button, hot. press any button. Yeah, we just get yeah. Y'all thought it was sweet. Man, that's hot. Let me sit up in this. Yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, oh, brother. Pull my head up, some Johnny. Yeah, brother. Go ahead, take a sippy sip. Take a sip, brother Johnny. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Can you say the question one more time? Okay, so um, obviously, being black men that are police officers. Uh, especially coming after such a sensitive and raw time within our culture, especially the black community. For sure. Um, Knowing what you're signing Mm -hmm. up for, what were things that were like, man, I didn't expect this. And also on the other side, it's like, okay, man, this actually um, was something I did expect, but I didn't realize it was to this extent or the opposite. Like, so like kind of like what you went in there thinking and now that you're actually in the thick of it, because I'll, I'm always somebody who's really big on never judging a culture from the outside, mm-hmm. right? And I think it is um, tough because the black community generally does do a major job of judging police department from the outside, mm-hmm. not knowing we've never been actually involved yeah. inside of it. Mm-hmm. But we get the results, but y'all are actually in the the thick of it doing the time, doing the doing the actual serving and protecting so what is that like um see what i thought was is that um being a black man and a black police officer that my people would when they see me they're not just going to see me as uh, a police officer and i didn't think that i would have to break down so many walls uh through the process um but i get treated as if that i've beat somebody across the head or shot somebody myself just like a white police officer would would have and so i always have to whenever i approach them i gotta tell them like look man i'm not gonna let nothing happen to you like relax as long as i'm here there's not gonna be anything that, ha- that happens to you i'm not gonna let nobody disrespect you or talk crazy to you because it doesn't take all that it's- so you so you ride down the street in deep ellum too and yeah um that's like Predominant, oh, I not say predominantly, but there's a, a big homeless community, things like that. Yeah. So, like when you're getting these calls and 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 and, and even just being down the street, things like that. Um, what is it like being able to? Okay, I see the situation. 
I'm gauging situation. What level of intensity do I bring? What level of intensity should I draw back on? Like, how quick do you have to make those decisions? Split second. Split second. And and Caleb, you you came into you know the force like on a very in a very interesting time. If I remember correctly, you finished the academy like right after like the whole summer of 2020, right? And so like just talk about like what it felt like because you came in with a lot of tension, with a lot of people on edge, everybody was protesting. Like so just talk a little bit more about like that heightened experience. Into the thick of it. Facts. Really. We need the button for it. Um, <clears throat> really, just like coming into something that's so heated is it's like you being thrown into the fire. One, you got to make split second decisions, and then also think about your own self. Like I have a wife and, and a son, and so you got a group of people that don't like you whatsoever just because of the uniform that you wear. So imagine you thinking, okay, I got to be safe, but I also have to be. Uh, have to empathize for a group of people that are hurting right now. If you don't have empathy for people that are hurting, then what's the point in being a police officer? You're trying. You're supposed to serve and protect those same people. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, people don't understand when they see you that oh, he has empathy for people. So you have to show them. So a lot of times with me, and I'm gonna just be just be already started off being transparent. Through the almost three years that I've been a police officer, I haven't pulled my taser out and shot anybody anybody with my taser. I haven't maced anybody. Oh, only thing that I've done. Yeah, he said, yeah. "Speak for yourself." And that, and, and Ty's, and Ty's, Ty's patrolling in like uh, yeah. the suburbs. So, <laughs> well, and just and just for me, just 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 only I say that only because you know I know how to talk to people. Yeah, that's big. And, and I think, too, whenever I show up to a scene, just like we were talking about fitness, I make you rethink what you, what it is. You <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I make you rethink it with the words that I say to you. For sure. And just a stance. If you get out of the car, you got food all over you. Officer you, presence. Officer yeah, presence. Right. You, you, your shirt is all nasty. You fat. For sure. First thing I'm thinking, because growing up, you know, I, I, grew, I grew up on the east side of Oklahoma City. It ain't South Dallas, but it would be technically our version of the hood. Okay. Uh-huh. So I know how to think like that because that's, that's the people that I ran with growing up. Yeah. So if I see a dude from South Dallas and he want to wanna run or he want to fight, I have to make him think, look, man, like, you don't want to try, try me. <laughs> it ain't worth it. Right. <laughs> you know, some people just ain't com- they're not confident in their abilities. And I know that I'm confident in what I know with the law, and I'm confident in knowing, knowing how to deal with people. If I got to mm-hmm. get physical physical with you, I don't want to get physical with you because it don't take all that. The job is, is about 98% communication. Do you, agree? you agree? Yeah, 100% agree. Um, I want to answer that question, though. The, uh, Please do. The stereotypes that I came in with. Um, it's it's kind of on the same line as you, brother, uh, basically that I was the enemy. But I knew that going in, and I was prepared for the responsibility of, of I'm going to be the enemy to some folks by the badge and by the color of my uniform, right? And so I wasn't looking to necessarily figure out, you know, what has flipped from, from that stereotype, more of, okay, how can I take this responsibility and, and do my job to the glory of God or just do my job well? That's good. And so I think a lot of times – Officers, um, they go into the they go into the job, or they're already in the job, and because of re- the light of you know recent events, it's always man, I'm going to defend why I do this job. You know, I'm going to defend why I am a police officer, uh, and that this is an honorable, and noble job. Like, if you understand that it's honorable and noble, there's n- there's no reason to defend it. Your job is to do the best that you can do at being a police officer. Right. And by and like you said, by your officer presence, you know, what you look like when you when you step step to somebody who is high as a kite on PCP and ready to throw down. You know what I'm saying? Can you de escalate the situation enough to make sure not only are they safe, but you safe and the kids are in the back of his car safe too. Yeah, sure. You get what I'm saying? Because sure. those are the type of situations we get in, we get in. Many situations like that, right? Okay, so uh after um hanging around a couple 
uh, cops and having friendships with a few cops as well. Um, is there ever technically a moment where you're off duty? Because, like, even when I'm around other cops, the mentality really doesn't, as I'm seeing, doesn't check out. Like, if you're at a restaurant, it's like you're going to sit in the corner just so you can peep the scene. If, 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 if you're in a place, you're, like, in a, in a bordering aspect of things. So, like, is there ever, like, a clock out mentality for y'all? Um, yes and no. Um, so the whole restaurant thing, of course, I'm always, because of the job, I'm aware of my surroundings. Because I showed up in a restaurant where people getting active. So I'm like, okay, what's, what's the best place for me to sit? I don't want to have my back to the door. You get what I'm saying? Or things like that. This is a, like, this is a, a center-fed room. Somebody come in here, wh- wh- what do I need to do? What do I need to do? You know what I'm saying? Where I'm going? Where's my corners? Where are my angles? I've already checked that out, but... Uh, it's different. The average person don't do that, bro. Right, right, right. <laughs> I didn't do that before, prior, prior to me being a police officer. <laughs> this, this man. Hey, my man said we got exit one, two, and three. If, if he goes to two, I'm going to three. If I go to three, I'm going to four. And I got that thing no, on no, me. Prior, prior to me being a police officer, that was nowhere yeah, in my mind. Yeah. We sit down to eat. Yeah, yeah. Prior to being a police officer. Right, right, right. Center now, fed room. Yeah. Yeah. Center fed room. Yeah. He oh, played. He oh, played. Dang. He he did geometrical alignments before we even start this podcast. No, 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 no. So so stuff like that. Like I'm on, and I'm ready for if something were to happen. But I'm not. I don't have a uniform on. I don't have a badge on. So there's no sense of I represent the city, uh-huh. and you know I can let my hair down a little bit as far as how I, I communicate with y'all and talk to y'all and, yeah. and um, relate to y'all, but. The show. All right. Uh, uh, So another question. Do y'all understand the frustrations that the common, uh, just the black community has in general when it comes to police? Um, Because even being real for me, um, I say this all the time. Like, I have no reason to just trust a police officer. I do not know you. Why should I trust you off rip? I trust about four cops. And I have y'all's numbers and yeah. two of y'all here. <laughs> it's real facts. Like, but that's people in general. Yeah. And so, like, uh, when I meet a random person who has a uniform on and it's like, hey, you don't trust me? No. Nope. I don't even try to get in that conversation because it's like you've already put something on there that's like, okay, bet. If I tell you no, now you're going to try to affirm why I should be trusting you. Yeah. And even in that, there's a level of dominance and a level of a submission that I have to have to have to go through. Mm-hmm. And so... Is there a level where it's like, all right, bet we understand the frustrations of the black community as to why we are seen this way? Because literally, after even working in Village Oaks, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, it's it's a it's a community in South Oak Cliff, uh, very impoverished. Uh, I, I went there for the purpose of serving the uh, the young kids in the after school program, and when I tell you. Every time the police showed up, we knew it was problems. It wasn't like a, hey, you're coming to help. It's, hey, it's about to be an issue. Even to the extent of uh, there was uh, security guards that would call the police to help the tow community mm-hmm. tow our cars. That's crazy. And I got, I got my car towed so many times, and the police would escort them with these big old guns. With a tap. I'm like, how y'all, I didn't even know y'all had, I seen those in like, Call, I mean, Call of Duty and, 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 and Grand Theft Auto. I didn't, I didn't know them joints existed. Bro said they switched their loadout. You feel me? And I'm, 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 and I'm sitting there like... Bang, bang. About to, about to go to a car. And I'm, I'm sitting there wow. like that. And so, and, so, and so for me, literally having those instances and having those interactions with uh, police officers in that context and then also being a part of the community where when a police officer shows up, he's like, hey fam, like, I know uh, you called us over here, but I'm telling you not supposed to be here because we're told that it has to be a minimum of three of us. So I'm going to have to leave. I'm like, fam, like, we need y'all. Like, what's, what's, what's really popping? He's like, yeah, um, we're more responsive than preventative. And I'm like, right. well, if I'm telling you what's going to happen because it's a pattern what's happening, can y'all just post up and help us out? Ah, it's other places we got to go. I'm like, yo, that's tough. And so uh, just – Back to the, the full surface, is there a level where it's like, yeah, we, we get it? Or it's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, try to see it from our perspective. Uh, I see it both ways because when I'm outside of, outside of uniform, 
I deal with the same things that, I mean, I'm black. I'm black as can be, blackity black, black. So I deal with the same exact things. And me personally, and this is going to sound weird, I don't like police. And I am a police <laughs> officer. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's, there's a lot of us that... that yeah, that like, threw me off. I, 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 well. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Well. Uh, okay. Like, I've been pulled... I'm, the reason why I say that, and let me just go more in depth. Please do. I have been pulled over one time before I was a police officer. And my experience with that one police officer caused me to just... It, he humiliated me. He made me feel like I was somewhere that I wasn't supposed to be. Mm. And that made me be like even more like, man, I need to get in this so I can change that. That's good. Like, oh. That's good. Since I've been a police officer, the day that I graduated from the academy, I was pulled over. <laughs> and I've been That's pulled. Wild. I've been pulled over five or six, seven times in my uniform, saying, "Why are you in? The, why are you over here? I'm going home. You're not supposed to be here." Well, whichever, whichever way am I supposed to go? Where am I supposed to go? So I get treated the same, the same way. I don't know if y'all, y'all saw that, that, uh, that sergeant in the military. He's in his uniform getting yeah, based. Yeah, at the gas station. At the gas oh, yeah. station. He's yeah. complying and that. asking That's questions. Wild. That, to me, I felt that because you're going to treat somebody a certain way when they're in the same uniform that you're in. But because I'm black, I'm not supposed to be where you are. Because I'm educated on what it is that you can and can't do to me. You don't like that. You don't feel like I'm supposed to be in your shoes or be in, um, in your presence mm. or be able to become a sergeant or be able to be in SWAT or be able to be in these different, these different things. So you've made the police department essentially like a mission field. Yeah. Indeed. I love that. That's I crazy. love that. On a, on a spiritual level, we get into, into, that, and that, into that too later on. Indeed. I mean, that's what's needed. And <coughs> that will change a lot for the community if there is more interaction and more talking and more understanding. Because a lot of these people that are police officers, they've never spoken to black men. They've never <laughs> spoken to a young black man that is in survival mode. They don't understand that. They don't get that. <laughs> look, look, I'm, I'm, I'm real big on um, policing in communities you're familiar with or at least have a level of familiarity with. Because it's like if you're stepping into some place that doesn't feel like home, it'll always feel like a job yeah. and never like, hey, I'm actually protecting my community. Yeah. I'm actually here for my people. But when it becomes those people and them it you get treated like a, those people into them yeah. rather than us. Yeah. So I, I I can't speak for Dallas. I don't know. <laughs> He's like I'm a GP. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, and I mean yeah. that sincerely yeah. because I would throw a wrench in that. And one to answer your question, do I understand? You know, being black all my life, yes, I do understand, and I've had negative interactions with police officers for sure. Um, I understand, but that's that's that that's that piece of responsibility. You know, I came into the job with an idea of I am responsible for all that comes with this title of being a police officer, right? right? So, like, I think the Lord has called us to steward whatever we're in. Yeah, if, if I'm a I'm, if I'm in this black skin, <clears throat> I am I am responsible to steward this well, I and mean, be proud of that. If I'm if I'm a in this black skin that happens to be a police officer and a believer. And a father and a husband, Dang. then I better steward that well. Hey, so you better. Why are you not pushing so, buttons? Why are you not pushing Dang. buttons, brother? I'm, I'm, I'm saying for, for what you're saying. Do you understand? Yeah, I, I understand. But Spitting. at the same time, it's, it's my job to right. to steward what I have. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I would say for like just to kind of touch on what you were saying. Hey, being a big proponent of uh, you know policing in the communities that you. Uh, live in is that what you said? Familiar with, Fami- yeah. familiar. Because like, because it's it's it's, it's one thing. Because like, obviously, like that's the ideal aspect. Of course, like, hey, I grew I'll, up. Here, that's what I was just about to it's, say. It's more so familiar with. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, do you, you know, the, know people? the people? Yeah, yeah. Of course, right. of course. That's what I would say. So that's why I, I can't speak for da- uh, for Dallas. Mm-hmm. Our numbers are in such a way. Like, who's on the force are in such a way that um, 
no one wants to be a police officer right now. And so um, we have to now play, okay, what is priority right now? We know that life and the, the sanctity of life and making sure that we can be as preventative as possible is a priority. Now, how can we, you know, usher in this community policing aspect in which we can start garnering and gaining the trust of these community members? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that's put on a back burner. Uh, And I'm not saying that's fortunate or unfortunate. I think that's just part of the beast, you know, of, of being an understaffed, Entity in the society. Okay, so I have to I have to put it out there because I know every person has this question. It's tough hearing. There's an understaffing when I'm getting pulled over while I'm driving Lyft, <laughs> and then four niggas show up behind me, and I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. "Thought y'all had thought y'all had to do something." I'm like, "Yo, like, why thought is it four to, people? Thought y'all had to do backing something? Backing up the backup, the backup, the backup." I'm like, "Yo, I'm That's Lyft." Funny. That's, that, Look, it happens Mommy. every time. Bro, when you say, get pulled over, you get back up for the backup, yeah. the backup, the backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, y'all need to back up. Yeah. Like I said, I can't speak. I can't speak for Dallas. I don't know where Dang. you get pulled over Dang. for. You okay. said that. You be uh, setting our, yourself up. You be throwing this, self oops. Who, me? No, or, Mitchell. Mitchell. With yeah. the buttons, you can't yeah. hear it. You don't have to. <laughs> it's fine. So, no, I, like I said, I can't speak for Dallas, but I know, I know for, and I'm not. That's no shade. That's no shade because I don't know how y'all run. I know for our supervisors and, and our sergeant staff, hey, we all, our, our motto is, <coughs> hey, you on the clock, do something. Right. You're here to do, you're here to work. You're not here to socialize. You're not, you know, if, if you got to, you know, work a night nice shift, if, if you got some time, yeah, of course, you know, yeah. side by side, chop it up, see how the fam's doing, you know, mm-hmm. and keep it pushing. But you're here to work, right? Sure. And so, but sometimes that's a necessity. And, I, and I'll tell you why, Mitch. I'll tell you why sometimes it's a necessity. If it's just you in the car, right? Let's say you got pulled over. I pulled you over on, on a service road, okay? Let's say the service road speed limit is about 55 miles per hour, so I know that average person is going to go about 60, 65, right? It's dark out, okay? Uh, drunk people like lights. I don't know if y'all like that. know that. They like lights, okay? So they're attracted to the lights and, and, and things like that. Most, most accidents involving uh, drunk persons is squad cars and, and uh, regular civilian vehicles. It's not civilian, civilian. Ah, the squad cards because they are attracted to lights. That's a very okay. interesting. So I'm gonna have myself. I'm calling for 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 seven. Have a back so we can at least have a buffer between. If somebody hits us, then they're gonna hit that car, and now we we now we alert. Okay, uh-huh. you know we about to get hit. We can move. It give us enough time. A buffer between yeah. the contact I made up there and the crash that happened behind me. Right. Prime example: thirty. I hate thirty with a passion. I hate I thirty with a passion. Uh, apparently, both of y'all do with, uh, with a complete passion. Wow! I've been out there for a stranded vehicle, Mitch. the The worst sound you hear is behind you, bro. Yeah. It's the worst sound you can hear, bro. I'm telling you. I, I hey, let me get a seven. Hey, is, it, is fire available? Hey, let me get. Let me, <laughs> and then come with the fire truck and block that whole the thing whole up. thing down. Indeed, right. So sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's a it's a matter of safety. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes I go lie. I've definitely, I'm, I'm admitted, I definitely pulled up behind another officer and was like, man, I ain't got nothing to do. Ain't nobody calling me. My right. sector cool. Yeah. Just going to check out, see how everybody doing. And it's not personal. I don't know the car. I don't even know. I don't even know the story. I don't know yeah. why you stopped them, why you pull them over. Mm-hmm. I, my job You're on the to, clock. And I'm just on the clock and this sure. is something to do. Yeah. Indeed. Right now, this is something to do. Cause, cause, I can really, that's, that makes sense. We, at the end of the night, we have to turn in activity and show them what we did. Uh-huh. And if you don't have anything on your activity sheet that shows that you did something, then you're stealing money, basically. Yeah. You know, you just come to work and they're paying you. Playing Fruit Ninja. Yeah. Playing uh, Fruit uh, Ninja. Yeah. Dang. You know, so I didn't know that was still a thing. And, and, and even, and even when we, we pull... <laughs> Whenever we pull cars over or, um, you know, whether it's on the highway or whether it's, uh, I try not to pull anybody on, over on the highway because it's just, it's too fast. Mm-hmm. 75 is, I mean, it's a monster. Like, uh, we had an officer a couple months back, probably six months back, he, pat, he, he died because a drunk driver hit him. Man. On the side of the road? No, he was working an accident. Oh. And the car came and just. Tracked him to lights. Hit him, tracked him to lights. Hit him. And then the dude was laughing about it, like, because he was just so drunk. So, you know, you, I felt bad for him and his family because he's just out there trying to do his job. And, you know, the guy hit the car and he, he passed. That's so, I mean, it's, it's, it's strategic in how 
the car is even set up. You know, some guys, if you know, you got four guys, there may not be a lot that's going on, and it, it's in our eyes, it's not bad to go check on uh, check right. up on go somebody. Check on your, yeah, that's a wild statistic. You said it's not civilian, civilian. It's typical. Yeah. That's wild. For drunks. For yeah. drunks, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In Texas, by the way, I know y'all Uh-oh. people who, who live in Texas, y'all love the home state. I hey, I, since I've been down here, I, I love Texas. As far as the driving statistics is concerned, it's the highest in the yeah. in the country. Yeah. For for fatal fatal accidents. Wow. Okay. Well, now, and that's not that. like a. Well, there's more cars on the road. Actually, there's not per, proportionally. There's not more cars on the road compared Indeed. to other states. So it's not that y'all. Hmm. I don't know if y'all y'all like to get lit all the time or I don't know what it is, but yeah. Yeah. Fat, fatality accident. I could either confirm or deny <laughs> such statements. <laughs> as you. And, 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 right. As you, as you sit, right. as you partake, right. indeed, indeed, and too, too, like uh, y'all gotta, y'all gotta take it in the perspective of uh, traffic stops are one of the most dangerous things. The most, yeah, hmm. the, the most. most. Can you, can you explain why? The most yeah, I gotta hear that. Can okay. you explain why the traffic most. stops happen so often for me? Exactly. That's the yeah. why it's dangerous. Yeah. So ah. my job is to be <laughs> okay because ahead, of the, ahead, the ahead, amount of time you, you was on some. We we're trying we're trying to go home. Okay. At the end of the night, guys. In each video or most videos that you see on social media, what is it? What is it dealt with? Traffic stops. Okay. Absolutely. So imagine I want you to get the perspective from a police officer. Imagine imagine it's dark outside like it is right now. You got your lights on. You're trying to do the best that you can to blind the person that is in this spot. In this spot, you you've been pulled over, so you've seen a light hit your window. Blah blah blah. So you trying to walk walk up, and a dude got a shotgun like this. Wait, is he not going back to jail? So he think you pulled him over for his warrant. You just pulled him over because he made a wide right turn. Yeah. Okay. Imagine that. So we walking up, we walking up, and then boom, head getting blown off. So what you think the next officer is thinking? Dang, this could be the one. I hope I hope this Man. isn't the one that 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 is gonna be the one that's gonna take me out, or yes. am I gonna get shot? We just pulling you over for hey, man, you blew that that light back there, you know. I may not. We have officer, officer discretion each time that we pull you over to give you a ticket or not. If you got warrants, that's a different story. So so hearing that from the perspective of somebody who walks in with a mindset of empathy, mm-hmm. I can feel that. Mm-hmm. Now. If that is the common mindset of an officer, but on the other end, that officer lacks empathy or does not yeah. even Amen. know the community, Amen. Right. then it's literally it's every time you pull somebody it's, off, it's like, problem. yo. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we got to – so that's, that's the reality is that the traffic stops are the most dangerous thing we do because you don't know – what you're walking up to. There's no okay? call sheet. We still have to walk up to the vehicle, yep. right? In wild cars passing us by, you know, whether we do a passenger side approach, it don't matter, you know. Yeah. Uh, with with that in mind, it's almost as if, you know, you've been in camp, you've been in camp. We start with a closed fist and we, we lighten up. We, okay. we lighten up. For sure, yeah. right? That's right. That's right. Reason why is because we need to fill out what's going on, okay? Sure. I walk up to the car, I'm on, I'm on 10, okay? I, I say my name. Reason why I stopped you, get a vibe. Of, okay, what's going on? Okay, <laughs> reading body language. Then I start lighting up. Next thing I know, I'm talking about. All right, so we we on for dinner. You know, you and your family. You know, so so it man, it depends, man. So for sure, for sure. And I do appreciate, uh, especially the time I got pulled over in uh, in Oklahoma. Yeah, I got you, bro. Fam, like what I tell. There's okay. a right way and a wrong way to do it. So yeah. so first of all, I get pulled over by the DEA. I'm like. Fam, and oh, yeah. he pulls that's, me over. That's not the regular cops. <laughs> they don't call. My man had an orange suit. I'm like, hey. bro, you had badges I ain't never seen. You don't want the DEA, yeah. my boy. It was, <laughs> it was, a, it was. A, it was a, I'm like, fam, and so he pulls me over, and then like, I, so I see him, yeah. like and then he speak. Yeah. I literally pass him. After I pass him, he then follows me, and so he's trailing behind me. And after he's trailing behind me, I'm like, okay, he's. Kind of tailgating your boy. Let me uh, go ahead and just move over. And so I move over into between like two, 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 18 wheelers so he can get by. After I do that, he pulls up beside me, looks at me, and then hits the lights. And I'm like, that can't be for me. And so he gets me. Then it's like, hey, step out the car. Oh. And I'm like, uh, you want me to step out the side of the car where there's traffic? He said, get out the car. I'm like, 
fam, like I, I and he was on the passenger side. Yeah, right? and I'm, I'm like, he's on the passenger side, telling me to get to outside of the car, the car right. on the op. I'm like, I've never heard an officer say this. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm like, so I was like, you want me to do? He's like, quit asking questions, get out. I got it all on video, and I'm like, okay. I get out the car. He then tells me step back, and starts talking to the person in the passenger side. I, I says, officer, um, I'm the one who was. The violator, according to you. So why are you talking? And he, he literally pulls up. Get back, get back. I'm like, you. What did I do? Why for? How come? I gotta get all the smoke. And so, literally, he he then goes and tells me that uh, I was clear to go, things like that. And I I really just think that he was just fishing for drugs because I'm like. He did, he's not even an officer. Like, I was like, I was like, yeah, there's a couple things wrong with that. So yeah. one, I need to know if he was actual DEA or was he a DEA task force? You know, was Might he a task force? So task force meaning like he's actual an, uh, a city employee and he's just working with the DEA on a special task force, okay. right? Because he has okay. no jurisdiction as a federal employee to pull over uh, a civilian in a certain municipality. You right. feel me? So he, he so he might have been task force where he's been given those and granted those powers to, to run traffic. Ty, right. I just want to affirm you because you sound really official right now. Oh, bro. Municipality. Ty, Ty, <laughs> <laughs> hey, talk, bro. My, hey. I was like, okay. My man graduated yeah. from the academy yeah. with honors. Next time I sir, get, yes, sir. Next time you I get me? pulled over, I'm going to be like, what's your municipality, nigga? <laughs> Nah, hey, nah, I, 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 nah, bro. Next time I get pulled, I'm like, hey, call Ty. Call Ty. I heard nah, the nah, word. call Ty. I don't know what it means, but I need to know if you got it. Bro, I'm, I'm pulling rank. When I'm in Dallas and getting pulled over, but hey, nah, nah, call Caleb. Call Caleb, nah, bro. I ain't about to do shit. I've yeah, been grand prank. Nah, bro, call Tyler bro. Caleb Yo. about yay high. His shoulder's about this big. He I'm light skin. Rank. You know. I'm hey. pulling rank. Yo, wow. He got municipality here, nigga. <laughs> municipality. <laughs> Indeed. You got any questions you want to ask, Trey? No, I'm, I'm loving this, man. I think this is good because, you know, I work in, you know, I, I kind of like Mitch, I work in nonprofit. And so the biggest things <clears throat> that I see with even people who come into the nonprofit space is they forget that the work you do is pointless without the people you serve. And so if you're not serving people the way they need to be served, what are you doing? And what are you talking exactly. about? Exactly. And so it's like, even with cops, man, I, I love to hear what you guys are saying because when you come into these communities, and I would even say, Mitch, what you said earlier about, you know, serving um, in communities you're from, that is ideal. But I think when you come into a, a job that requires you as a public servant to just be at the, the will, beck and call of people, is you, a part of, a part of your job is actually getting to know the community. So, yeah. You don't necessarily have to be where I'm from to love me. You know what I'm saying? Like, to know somebody is to love them, and you cannot serve somebody you don't know and love. And so, like, that is the basis of so many things and so many problems, I think, is that we get cops. And understandably, right, because to to your point about the story with, you know, coming up to a car you don't know, all it takes is one bullet. All it takes is one wrong person. And so, like, I get that. That makes sense that you would have to approach it with that level of scrutiny. <clears throat> but I also think that, like, the other part of that is it's what you signed up for. Amen. Right, right. And, and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying, like, you should be okay with not going home. Ideally, yeah, I want y'all to make it home. But I think sometimes the thought of making it home is put over the people you serve. And I think that's where it gets a, it gets to be an issue, right? If I'm serving somebody, how can I then say my needs are more important than yours, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's kind of like kind of like what you guys said, kind of adjusting the presence and the feel and the vibe of a situation when you arrive on set, right? Because if you come in on ten and the situation is already on ten, it's it's, yep. it's only one place you can go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like de escalation, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I I love hearing this because I think the other side of it is I remember again. In 2020, in all the – it was so much. Like, it was – like, from, like, end of May to probably all the way through the end of July, you couldn't get on social media without seeing something. Nice. Yep. And I think what what's tough is is when people become they, – they, we got so used to seeing it, and so there became this lack of empathy on either side. Mm-hmm. It, it, it turned into let's fix a problem together to each side saying, no, I'm going to do what's best for me. 
Apathy, yeah. It's, and it's like, well, what are we accomplishing? And so I think part of it is like, you guys, again, have to come in with the mindset of, hey, I'm serving these people. And I think for us, and even for me, because I've been pulled over, I've been put over, pulled over in GP. Literally, I was uh, dropping my homegirl at Brilliant off. We just went to the movies. And she was, um, she worked for Young Life at the time in uh, Arlington. And she was staying with uh, one of the Young Life donors. And they lived in a gated community um, off of a 360. <clears throat> and I was driving her. I, was, I got off 360 and turned off the service road onto the street. And I saw the cop pull out behind me. We're driving for three miles. Stopping at red lights, stopping at stop signs. He followed me for about 10 minutes. As soon as I flipped my turn signal, he pulls me over. And he's like, hey, let me get your ID, all that kind of stuff. I was like, okay, cool. And I thought it was weird because I'm like, all right, bro, if he's going to pull me over, what's different now than 15 minutes ago, right? And so, you know, he, gives, he, uh, he takes my ID. <clears throat> and he, uh, he runs it, he comes back, he says, hey, can you step outside the car? I said, okay, cool. I get outside the car, man, it's eight cops. And I get it, right? You, you want backup. As soon as I got out, my heart dropped. Of course. And I'm like, what's, like, my first was like, bro, what's going on? And he was like, oh, well, you know, we noticed that you got pulled over and you got a, 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 a traffic ticket. Um, two weeks ago that you haven't paid yet. I was like, well, yeah, it's, it's been like two weeks, bro. Like, it, I don't even know if you can. Like, I don't know how, how the system works. But I'm like, yeah, like 20, 21 days. Yeah, that don't even make sense. Yeah. Like, wait, I, I was like, I, I was like, you know, what, what, what? Like, <laughs> I, I literally said, like, okay, okay, why'd you have to put me out the car to say that? Well, you know, we didn't really want to. We didn't know who that was in the in the car, and we didn't want you to, you know, be embarrassed. I said, bro, how about a, a speeding ticket. And so it's just like for me. I, I really do challenge myself as much as possible, but when stuff like that happens, I get why I see other people saying F the police and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, of because course, of course. because my experience, you know, is 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 minimal compared to some of these kids in like South Dallas who it's not even cops, bro. It's white people. I literally I know kids at Madison who are like, I don't I don't think white people can be good. And it's like that's tough. But it's like I can't invalidate the experience. So it's, it's like our only interaction. It's our only interaction. Yeah. But at the same time, I know that's not the truth. And so I think, you know, these these types of things, man, I think they are so important is is because like when when you have more of this, right? More and not just representation, because even if it's white cops, Hispanic cops, Asian cops, just coming and disarming themselves and saying, Hey, look, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't want this to be the case. But also, here's my perspective. Mm -hmm. If you understand me and I understand you, then in these situations, we should be more informed on in how we move. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. it takes to having that conversation while you're out there with those people. Yeah. And they yeah. happen often. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they and happen it, often. And it's more, more of the um, – whenever I come in contact with somebody, I try and educate. I don't – my first thing isn't, I'm taking you to jail. How is it that I can take you to jail? I don't I – don't, approach a situation like that because most people that you come in contact with they don't know mm -hmm. like they have no clue how it works yeah how it all works and yeah. the system is pretty messed up yeah you can be pulled over for yeah. anything you're there's yeah. nobody i'm not even a perfect driver at, at all <laughs> indeed <laughs> but if you look at the, right. if you look at the traffic code, you can be pulled over oh, yeah, for just yeah, about right. anything. I can pull yeah. you over for a lot of stuff. A lot of <laughs> like, I, I can find a reason. Yeah. I can find a reason. Yeah. Like, 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 for, reason. For, like for instance, in our tra in our traffic code, you can't honk your horn unless it's for an emergency. Wow. Texas. Yeah. Wow. Hey, that's a reason for me to. For, that's a call to reason for contact. There's a million reasons for, 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 for contact. Y'all better stop honking your horn before I call the cops. <laughs> yo, hey, wait a minute. Hey. That's wild. And I've literally seen. I've literally, hey, yeah. <laughs> I've literally seen people. We we call them uh, dope chasers. Usually, dope chasers they work backwards. And when I say working backwards, is they have no clue how that they got to. Finding some drugs on somebody, but they make up the story as they go because they found something. Indeed, indeed. For instance, and this this happened. I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna put a timetable on it. This happened a while. I'll say it's a while ago. Guy pulls this guy over. He asked. He asked for cover. 
His reason for pulling them over said he smelt marijuana. I get to the call, get to the scene, you know, talking to a dude. He's like, inventory the vehicle. He's going for UCW. UCW is unlawful carry of a weapon. Reason for that, he found marijuana in there. I get to the car, and I'm expecting to smell like, well, whoosh. Especially if you was driving weed, and yeah. smelling. Yeah, if driving yeah. and smelling. And it's smelling, smelling the weed. Somebody's passing you. You're in your car with your windows yeah. rolled up. And you saying that you smell weed. Yeah. They got that Snoop, loud. Snoop is in there. <laughs> they right? got that loud. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop, yeah. Snoop, Wiz, Schoolboy. Yeah. All they homies. They all in there. You <laughs> said you got hey, currency. You can the see back. the smoke right. from the. Damn. I'm thinking currency going to be in the back seat. <laughs> with his feet My crossed. <laughs> My fault, dog. And, and three in his hand like this. <laughs> yeah. I, get there, I get there and I don't smell nothing. But then he he's he's looking in the, in the glove box and he finds like, I mean, when I say the smallest quantity of. Marijuana. I'm like they call it a teenth. Wow, I learned that. Yeah, and I'm just like wow. And so this that's what this guy this guy does Dope over chases. and over and over and over again. <laughs> Finds and it's it creates reasonable cause. It's frustrating to me, right? Because it's frustrating Reason, to me reasonable suspicion. Suspicion. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Reasonable suspicion. And <laughs> yeah. hey, you you the yeah. municipal <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, I got you. I got you. Speaking municipally, it bothers me because it, my mindset is is that almost every person has one or two things. They either have weed on them or in their car, or they have a gun or yeah on them or in their car. Especially in Texas. Yeah, especially in Texas. Especially wild Wild West, baby. With the laws that, that we have now. And so, mm-hmm. if you go looking for it, you're gonna find. You're yeah, gonna of, course, find it. of course, of course, y'all. But sure. again, every person doesn't have to go to jail. But I mean, obviously, with that in the in the realm of things, he's not wrong for how I don't say how he's doing his job. According to law, according legally, to, yeah, legally, legally, according to law, do, legally, legally, he's doing yeah. everything thing right. According when, to law, when I think of think of the um, systematic racism, mm-hmm. and for anybody that thinks that is not a real thing. Is out of their mind. You can come talk to me. Heard it from a source. Look at this. <laughs> I want. I want to. I want to emphasize what Elisha said, uh, and tell you to put your foot, you know, on their necks when you're talking about right. de-escalation. Mm-hmm. That's that's key. That's important because I, now I'm a comic book fan. I love Spider Man. Yeah. This is going to be the cheesiest thing I say all night. I love great it. Great power comes great responsibility. Yes, but that's the truth. Facts. If it came from Facts. Spider-Man or not. Yeah. We, as officers, we've been given a great power. We can literally seize uh, custody of your person. Yeah. I can detain you. I can restrict your movement because I have probable cause to do so. Yeah. yeah. Okay? And so that's, a, that's great power. Facts. I can look at somebody that I've never met before and say, and they ask me, am I free to go? No. no. You're not free to go. You right That's there. wild. You sit down and stay there. That's wild. Until I get done with my investigation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's great power. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. And if we need to, as officers, we need to treat that power with a certain level of responsibility. Right. Knowing that you have that power, don't, not only don't abuse it, don't get lazy. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Don't get lazy with it. Yeah. You know, I think. That's real. I think uh, that's one thing I, like you said, like. My mission field, yeah, it is the people I serve, but it's also the people I work with. It's That's my mission field too huge. Because That's I, my, huge. my goal is to get somebody to realize, like, yo, what if that was your mom or yeah. your brother, yeah. or your cousin, or your dad? You know, how would you treat them? Even bang, if they're in the wrong. Bang, bang, right? Like, bang, even if they bang. need to go to jail. There's we, I come in contact with people all the time, like, yeah, you need to go to jail. Yeah. Like the concept of grace, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like, but but I'm. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Nah, fam, you don't need to go home tonight. I don't. I don't think thing, you though. should go here's, home. Here's the thing that people have a hard time understanding. I am loving you and dignifying you by taking you to jail. Right. Interesting justice. Yep. I am. Ser- I am serving you, the offender. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Here, here, I've had people thank me after I arrested them. I've had people on the way to jail have full fledged conversations about the Lord, full fledged conversations about their lives. Man, you know what? If you didn't take me to jail, I probably would have harmed myself or done wow. this or done that. Now, I'm not that's saying good. that's every single person I take to jail, but 
but because I, of I, your mindset and how you conduct yourselves, and right? How you, how you treat of course, people. of course. And I think that's that's something that I want to I want to say I would say Dallas does too. Dallas and Grand Prairie both there there's programs set up so that we can continue to foster that mindset in all of our officers because yeah. this is this community policing is new. It's sort of new. Yeah. You have officers uh, in my department as well, uh, all around the country who, you know, community policing and, and, and how they need to uh, deescalate the situation. That's uh-huh. a, a very new concept. Wow. And it, would you, would you almost say it's contradictory to how you were trained? Not how I was trained, how they were trained. Mm. Institutionally, they. It's, that's a good question. I think it's going to take some 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 of some of us young people get into supervisory roles. Yeah, but yeah. that happens with time. Facts, that's right? true. Because we don't have the seniority. That's true. Yeah, so it's it's coming around the corner, and of course, to this, it can't come quick enough. But people were literally not officers around the country were real, literally not taught how to dis, de-escalate. That that wasn't a part of their no training uh, uh, yeah. academy training. Yeah, so they were nine times out of ten taught. Usually to, okay, you called me for a problem. I'm supposed to solve. I'm a problem solver, right? Problem solver, interesting. Not the escalation. That's yeah. interesting. So let me let me. Well, we ha- oh. My bad. I'm a I'm a I'm about to put my foot on the gas just a little bit. So we got oh. we no because no, no, this this is gonna lead into it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So 2020 was wild. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of self realization in both. I, I would say in the community for for a while. And one thing that prevailed um, out of 2020 was the term defund the police. Mm-hmm. How do y'all feel when y'all hear that? People are literally saying like, hey, we need to take money away. Police our own communities. From, you know, the police department. How do y'all feel when y'all hear that defund the police? 